One Piece chapter 996, a very fast-paced chapter to say the least, uh, mainly because it was divided into many parts. The more divided the chapter is, the more vaguer things are. But there is a lot to unravel here. Bits and pieces are starting to come together. And again, given the incoming hype of chapter 1000, I feel like something is building up, but I'm not exactly sure what that thing is. But let's start from the beginning. Now, the chapter starts off where we pretty much left off with Otama saving Nami and Usopp from page one and ulti. And of course, this was the reasonable choice as none of them are strong enough to go up against those two. And again, it makes a lot of sense given that page one and ulti are characters that were giving Luffy a hard time. Granted, Luffy was in base form, but they almost forced him to go into gear four. So for Nami and Usopp, being the weaker of the Straw Hats, they had no chance. So escaping for them is the right option until they make some sort of preparation. I'm pretty sure Usopp will come into play somehow. And let's not forget about Otama's ability to bring the gifters on their side. And I think that's what's going to happen moving forward. We also come to find out that Otama came here through the enemy ship which we can assume is one of the gifters that she tamed an udon uh, most likely helped her uh, which was most likely babanuki and the spider zone guy possibly we have yet to see them but but it's very likely that they could be on the island here as well we then move on to yamato's side of things in which a battle with sasuke's henchmen is still ongoing for the most part and again it's been highlighted several times over that yamato is very durable and i'm not talking about the ability to endure damage but the ability to not be damaged Granted, she is taking some damage, but it's nothing to the point where it's powerful enough to put her down for the count. And again, being Kaido's you know daughter, it, it makes a lot of sense that this genetic trait that Kaido has, this durability, has been inherited by Yamato, which makes her potential a lot higher than we think. Again, we don't know what Yamato is. I mean, we don't even know what Kaido is, but given the fact that she's an offspring of someone who has been said numerous times to be a creature, I would assume that Yamato was also not a hundred percent human as well. And of course, the horns that she has ties into all of this as well i do think that we are going to get some backstory to kaido's origin and that could explain some of the things that we have questions for and this eventually brings me to a scene where we see sasaki trying to take matters into his own hands uh, of course um, yamato notices this and tries to transform into something again which is most likely a zone devil fruit ability which goes along with the theme of kaido's crew and most likely an ancient you know zone type as well now interestingly i do not think that she is going to have a dragon base like the other flying six mainly because i feel like that's been overblown at this point with page one ot and x drake i feel like those three have taken most of what we consider to be the ancient reptiles i feel like oda wouldn't want to rehash some of the same you know same type of devil fruits over and over again so i do think that yamato is going to be a different ancient zone that isn't a dragon base something that i also believe to be the case with sasaki and who's who there's a reason why he's keeping these guys for last and even in this chapter oda didn't go all the way into showing what Yamato's abilities were. He only gave us hints as to what it could be. And obviously, Oda is waiting for the right time to show us what power she has. I will also say that there is a possibility that this transformation could be a transformation that doesn't involve any sort of Devil Fruit abilities. Again, which could tie into what Yamato is with the horns. But again, I do feel like Oda would need to go more in depth with that. Now, we also get to see Frankie being chased by one of the numbers here um, called Hacha, in which he attacks Frankie, which destroy the floor where Yamato and and Momo were leading them to the fall below. And I like how Frankie puts all his faith into someone that he hasn't met before. Again, which could be a sign of a potential straw hat. She seems to be merging with the crew quite well. Now, as they were falling, we get to see Yamato use a um, range technique that she used a few chapters ago, actually. Again, which seems to be uh, very similar to a flying sword attack. But in this case, she's using a blunt weapon. And this time, she seems to have been using hockey because the black lightning was present in this attack. And it was part powerful enough to one shot the number. I mean, Yamato so far has been really incredible in terms of her combat ability. Now, interestingly, she also mentions that Momo must survive because he is the person that is going to guide the world to dawn. Of course, the dawn is a term that has been brought up many times in the series. We know that Pedro said something similar about the Straw Hats back in Whole Cake Island. So this should be an indication for people to realize that Momo's role is going to be a lot greater than some people think. If the things that happened beforehand wasn't enough for you. And again, this is coming from Yamato, who knows a lot of things from Odin's journal. So his role is going to be as essential as Luffy and the Straw Hats into bringing about this new dawn. Momo having the voice of all things was already a huge indication of this, as that is an ability that Roger, Odin, and Luffy are the only ones confirmed to have, and potentially Law, because of that scene in Zo, as he reacted when Zo was speaking. And again, we saw how much of a role Odin played in Roger's journey. So it might be similar here with Momo and Luffy. And this also 
kind of ties into the next scene in which we get Law arriving at one of the Poneglyphs in the basement. Now, we know that Law has been very interested into the people of the D, something that he's been probably thinking about probably ever since he met Corazon, and we've come to find out that he's determined into finding out the mysteries behind the D. And I like this because we know that Luffy isn't really interested into that kind of things, right? And Robin even states this in this chapter. So it's nice that we're having someone else take this role into being interested into the mysteries behind the D, given that he's one himself. And we get a flashback with him having a conversation with Robin, in which Robin tells him that the only way to unravel these mysteries would be to find the red stones. Now, I'm assuming that she's talking about the end point, which is Rafto, and not more so that the red stones actually have something about the D clan on them. Because we do know that the red stones are like a map to Rafto. If anything, it would make more sense if the real Poneglyphs had answers about the D. But it seems like only specific or certain information is obtained at Rafto. And we know that the one Law found is a regular Poneglyph. Now, we don't know if it's a regular or a real Poneglyph that will only be known through Robin. And we also know that there was one in the capital as well, whether that one's a real or a regular, we don't know as well. So, so eventually we will find out. But it falls in line with what Big Mom has as well. We know that Big Mom has one real Poneglyph and two real Poneglyphs. So both of them have the same amount. We also get to see Kid in this chapter as well. And we pretty much figure out that he was making preparations in order to fight Kaido all this time. And by preparations, he was stacking up a mountain of scrap metal in order to prepare themselves for their battle against the strongest pirate. And even Killer was like, you're going up against the strongest pirate in the world. You can never have enough when you're going up against a Yonko because these guys are just overwhelmingly powerful. So it looks like Luffy and Kid will arrive at the same time. And again, I think this is culminating to that chapter 1000 because we also know Big Mom is also heading towards Kaido. So I think it's going to be a grand face off between Big Mom, Kaido, Kid, and Luffy and maybe Law. But Law is at the basement. So I'm not sure how he's going to get there, but I think he might show up there as well. Now, the chapter ends off with Luffy's side of things with them making progress towards reaching the roof of the castle currently they are very close to getting to the third floor now at the end of the chapter something interesting happens and sanji seems to take notice at a first glance i wasn't exactly sure what was happening but again it seems like something of perversion was taking place which is the reason sanji reacted so quickly because he is on spot when it comes to these things and a lot of people are saying black maria but uh for now it's very vague and i'm not sure where this is going to lead um knowing sanji's character i'm hoping that a khalifa moment doesn't happen again because because that was that would be kind of disappointing if Sanji just you know is treated like that again right I don't want to see Sanji doing that stuff right but we'll see how things play out definitely looking forward to what's going to happen next now there is no break next week so that is great um usually this is about the time where we usually go off on break so glad to see that there is no break for next week's chapter but again that is pretty much my thoughts on the chapter um comment down below what you guys think um like the video if you liked it and subscribe for more one piece content but it's fair guys and I will see you folk later peace Peace.